All right, let's talk about the Cobra, the Mac 10 or M10. Now this one I don't have the stock for it, but I do have the mock suppressor and two magazines, which is what it comes with. Two magazines. Probably the only thing I don't like about these is that the magazines are plastic. Um, and then the mock suppressor, which screws onto the threaded front, just like it would if it was a real suppressor. The way I'm going to take this down is with this two-piece pin. There's actually a different type of pin that's just one piece that's just held in by the spring tension. This one is actually two pieces. There's a main pin that's hollow and then inside there is a smaller pin that goes through from the other side and locks in place around the hollow portion. To remove that, just find something to lift that up so that that inside pin has some place to go. You can use just about anything, but I like to make this really easy by using a nylon punch and a nylon hammer. In order to knock that pin out, you need to see what direction that pin is in there. Right there you can see what direction that is. Obviously, you need to push it towards this direction, pushing it from this direction. Easiest way i found to do that. Now, you can use just about anything. Even a screwdriver will work, but if you don't want to mar up your finish, take a nylon punch, put it on there at the angle you want it to push, nylon hammer, just give it one solid wrap and that'll push it through. And again you can push this through with just about anything but just an appropriate sized drift punch knocks that right out. Once you have the inner piece out take the tension off the internal springs pull that out and you'll see where that's under tension and then you can see where this is hollow. Set both of those aside. Once you have that out, that spring tension will cause this to want to slide forward. Just let it slide forward so that it clears the hammer. And then you have your upper and lower receiver separated. Lower receiver. And the upper receiver. Now to finish taking this down to complete the field strip, all you do is Pull this to the rear, notice the keyhole shape, until it is inside that keyhole shape, and then it should pull right out. It's locked in place right there. Once that's out, the whole bolt assembly and recoil spring assembly will pull out. And there's your disassembled upper receiver, basic field strip. There's your basic field strip to M11. Set the lower receiver aside for now. This is part of the upper receiver, which we won't need for a while. Set it aside. And there's your stripped upper receiver. Not much to strip it, other than pulling a barrel, which I'm not going to do. And then your bolt and recoil spring assembly. Okay, the next part of this is the upper receiver. If you look, when you collapse this, this pin right here, if you let this spring go with any force, that pin can actually shear off which then becomes a headache to get the sheared pin out and uh, it's not an easy pin to find to replace. I have a way to cheat to help minimize that using a series of a couple of clamps. I create a space that this will fit into with the spring collapsed. So I rotate this so that the bar that the spring goes through is going to be on top. I collapse it, exposing that pin and rotate it so that I can get to that pin and be able to drive it out. And I just use a clamp to make sure everything stays in place and nothing moves. That pin right there is the next step here to drive that out. I like to start with a drift punch that's a little bit oversized so I can get it started without causing it to flare. Then I will switch to an appropriate sized drift punch that will actually fit through the hole to drive it all the way out. And there's that pin. Not very big. It's kind of easy to lose. Just a little roll pin. Once that's out, carefully and gently release your 
springs off of this little clamp setup that I have. Once you've got that out, you can remove your ejector and then your guide rod and recoil spring will also come out with the back plate. Once you've got them apart that far, the recoil spring and the rod and the back plate literally just separate. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out the firing pin. If you look at instructions, owner's manual, armor's manual, things like that, sometimes it doesn't even mention the firing pin. Others will tell you to take the extractor out first before you do anything else. I like to take the recoil sp spring assembly first and then do the firing pin and then do the extractor just because it keeps things from getting in your way as you go. Firing pin of course comes through the receiver face right through the hole there where the base of your bullet sets and your firing pin actually sits right here in this groove. What holds it in is this button. It's kind of like a peg. Put your finger over the top of the firing pin so that the firing pin doesn't fly away and just push that button out. Just like that. Your firing pin will just basically fall right out. Inside there, if you tap it, is your firing pin spring assembly. Now I call it a spring assembly because if you look, it's actually two or it's uh, two springs that set inside one of each one another, not just one spring. It's a little double coil spring. And then as your of course is your firing pin. Now to get the extractor out. The extractor is held in by this pin right here. There's the bottom of the upper receiver where the pin comes through and the top where the pin comes through. It'll usually be close to flush on one side, not on the other. For cosmetic reasons, it's usually flush on the outside or top of the receiver. So I will actually start my drift punch from the inside because there's that depression there that'll get my drift punch aligned before I start doing anything else. Put it up on a block so that as you drive it out, it drives out into the air and not into your workbench. Get your drift punch started. Give it a few taps. Now you actually don't have to take it all the way out. I usually don't. Just get it most of the way out. Place your thumb over the extractor so the spring doesn't cause it to fly away. Pull out your drift punch and then release the extractor and the extractor and extractor spring will fall right out. Now if you're replacing that pin for whatever reason, or if you're doing significant maintenance on it, you don't want that pin to get bent or damaged, grab a longer drift punch and drive it the rest of the way out. At the recoil spring, the ejector, the recoil spring guide, base plate, upper receiver. This is the firing pin retainer firing pin, firing pin spring assembly, and your extractor assembly which is the extractor and extractor spring.